I'm Marlene Outlaw. Thank you for joining me today. I would like to preface this video making sure that you watch the safety video. It's very important to watch and understand all the safety precautions that you need to take for Alcohol Inc. I have all my supplies laid out and ready and I do have a supply list attached. As you can see, I don't know if you can see this on the camera, but I have a ventilated system. If you don't have that, you need to be sure you at least open your windows or doors, whatever you need to, so that you have proper ventilation. Today I'm going to be painting on a whiskey jug. This is actually a, a second hand piece that I found. And I like this because it's hand thrown, so it had a lot of character to it. But I want to show you some things about Alcohol Ink. First of all, Alcohol Ink is designed for non-porous surfaces such as ceramics, glass, and even metal. And this piece is non-porous because it's been glazed. Some pieces that you see, like on the bottom of this, this hasn't been glazed. So Alcohol Ink does not do well on something like that. But one of the beauties of alcohol ink is that if you don't like what you just painted, you can erase it and start all over. Now I've already sprayed this piece with rubbing alcohol and you use 91%. That's all in the supply list. I've sprayed it with alcohol just to clean off any fingerprints or oil that's on there. But what I want to show you is that you can paint on your piece and if you don't like it, you can actually come back in with a, a wet a paper towel with alcohol and ink or even a cotton ball and just and erase it and just start all over. That's the beauty of it and I've done that many many times. So don't be discouraged if you don't like your piece you can always start over. But we're going to jump right in and start painting on this. Now alcohol and ink what I like about it is it is like a watercolor. You, you're not going to paint this like it's an acrylic because it's not. This is a transparent ink. It's not as pigmented as India ink. Probably you've all heard of India ink, but this is alcohol ink and rubbing alcohol is your solvent. So we're going to start in and I'm just going to paint green streaks all the way around. I use a turntable because I don't want to put my hands all over my piece. If you have one, that's great. If you don't, then just turn it you know with your hands. So I've gone around and done these green streaks and then, and you don't even have to clean your brush really, I'm going to dip into the, this color was called lime green and it's a pinata color. This one is called rainforest I believe and it's also a pinata. It's just, a, I'm just going to streak in and add a little bit of a darker green to it. Okay. And then here comes the fun part. Now this is all easy. Anybody can do any of this. One of the products that I really, really love is Ranger's Alcohol Blending Solution. And this, I use it because it, it has such a marbleizing effect about it. And see, I'm just squirting this on. And see how it lets it run? And it just, it just marbleizes it. It's just beautiful. Now if you don't have this, um, I get this at Hobby Lobby because they have some of the best prices on it. But if you don't have it, that's okay. You can use alcohol, and this is just alcohol on my brush. And I'm going to streak up to try to open up some of these runs so that they're not so defined. This is supposed to look like our greenery is running down. You don't want to do it too much. Just enough to, to help it blend in. Sometimes if you do it too much, you're just doing too much. You can go back in, and we can go back in later actually and, and add some more of this if we want to. This is kind of a light place, so I'm going to bring in some more of that. And I'm just going to use alcohol this time. Let it run down. And because we're using rubbing alcohol, this dries very quickly. I think that's real pretty the way it looks like that. It's like greenery. It's kind of a cascade look. 
So now I'm going to go in. I use denim blue, which is a ranger color. I use a lot of the ranger inks, but today I'm primarily using Pinata brand. Um, but this is denim blue, and I like it because it's got a little bit of a gray to it, so it's a soft blue. And I'm going to go in with a smaller brush. This is just a, I don't think I'm going to use this one, a smaller brush. Wet my brush, dab it a little bit, and I'm in, this is the uh, denim blue, and I'm just going to start dabbing. You can do this. This is very simple. Now see, that one's trying to run, so I'll try to catch it. I don't want too much ink on my brush, but it's going to start out light, and as we do layer after layer, it's going to get darker, so don't worry about the way it looks. We're just dapping right now. I'll put some on the handle, too. Now, see, I, by the time I go all the way around, it's already dried, and I'm just going to do a little bit more, a little bit darker here, and then I'm going to move on to another color. This is going to eventually look like flowers that are cascading down. And see as I go over this, see how it, it actually makes a whole new dot. So that's a, that's a, going to be like a flower. So rinse off my brush, dab it a little bit. And now I'm going to go in with a little bit darker blue. This is more of a turquoisey blue. This is uh, called sapphire blue by Pinata. And you can use whatever colors you want. However, whenever you do something like this, you need to stay within the same family. So, for instance, I probably wouldn't go in uh, with orange. If you know your color well, orange and blue make brown, so you don't want that. So I'm just going to do just a little bit of that, see what that looks like. And now staying in the same family, I'm going in with uh, Pinata. This is called Passion Purple. And if your brush feels too wet, you can always dab it on your paper towel. Always have your paper towel with you. So I'm just going to dab, keep going all around, dabbing, dabbing. This is a very strong color, too. And you want to go down into the green just a little bit. You see how these are starting to form as flowers here. Just go on around. And I'm going to actually stop and go back to some green when I get all the way around here. stop. And with a different brush, this is actually even a smaller brush, I'm going to go back in with some green and, and add some green up here. And you can do this when you're doing your other greenery, but because I don't want these flowers to look like they're pasted on, they need to all blend in and be part of the background. So I'm going to have to touch where I've already painted, but that's okay because I'm still painting up there go on up here and do the neck of it. You can do this on a just a regular base. I, I like whiskey jugs. I think they they look real pretty and they actually sell my art so they sell real well too. This is just a, a little hint of green just to imply that there's greenery up there. A little bit of the darker. Oops, that's too dark. Okay, I think we've made our point. I think I'm going to keep this little brush and go back in with the blues. I've got the uh, sapphire blue again. Just dot, dot, dot. You can keep going around and doing this. And as you can see, as, as they layer, the first layer is dried, and I'm putting wet paint on it. 
wet ink. And they just eventually they'll form into a little impressionism of flowers. And by doing the layers, you can see how I have, this is still the same color of purple, but I've got highs and lows of it. I've got some that's, that's a little bit more diluted than the others. And this is just dabbing. This is a stroke that anybody can do. Just don't, just make sure that your brush isn't too wet because then you just get big giant dots. I think we want these to blend in. So a drier brush is going to give you a richer color. Well, here's where my big blob was, so I'm going to try to doctor that up a little bit. Make it just look like it was a cascade of flowers coming down. So in order to make that look good, I'm going to have to do some more of that somewhere else to where it looks more natural and not like it was a mistake. Sometimes you don't even have to clean your brush. I'm just um, dipping it into different colors now. Trying to fill in some of these spots. And I'm going to go back in with the green, I think, and add some, uh, like a leafy look. I'm gonna keep the same brush too. I think I'm going to go in with the, kind of a mix between the dark green and the light green. And I'm just going to do some dots. My brush is a little wet. I could go in and erase this if it really bothered me. Sometimes that is, presents a bigger problem, but it, sometimes it works. If you just wanted to just want little tiny dots here. Do some on the top too. We're getting there. Doesn't take long. It's a, not any special stroke. Some of my Future videos will have more painting strokes to where you can learn to even do flowers. We'll do some flower ones, so be sure you check out all of my videos. And uh, like I said, I do use Ranger ink a lot. Tim Holtz is amazing to watch any of his videos. Just uh, he does product demonstration to where you can see how to use all the different products that Ranger comes up with. And they are, they're always adding new colors. I just ordered some more new colors that they came out with. Okay. Now if you want to, you can actually, with some of these leaves that I've cascaded down, I think I might just add a little bit of color to that, to where those are flowers. And if you're brave enough, you can go in with some yellow and touch up just to kind of look like, give the flowers a, a little bit of a middle to them. But I usually, I, I usually pass on that. I, it's not necessary. Put some little dots up here too. This just gives it more of a natural look because these flowers are, uh, they grow where they want. And one thing you learn with alcohol ink, it has a mind of its own too. You can go in with, um, if you wanted to add some pink, you could actually do that, but just be careful. Sometimes too many colors is just too many colors. You want it to be a soft look. How's that? So now to finish this off, you're going to coat it with, I use polyurethane. I don't use varnish. Um, I like it, and I use only 
the uh, oil base. Don't try to use water. Some people say it works. The water base, to me, just it just doesn't work. It it causes problems. So I always use oil base. Okay. So there's our first our first project. So like I said, be sure you check out my other videos. I have many more coming with all different kinds of fun projects that you can do. You don't have to be talented. You don't have to be an established artist. You can do this. And they make great gifts too. So thanks for watching. Join us next time. Have a great day. Bye.